Hey everyone, it's Pax. Welcome back for the next standalone scenario for the campaign play along we're doing over on Mythos Busters. We're looking at Carnival of Horrors. Let's get right into it. Once again, if you're not super familiar with the standalones, the uh, bag's pretty nasty here. Let's go take a look at it. So we've got our minus six, we've got some minus four, minus three, and then we've got tokens that are set to those. But we've also got some pretty awful effects here. Uh, these skulls get a lot worse really quickly. You gotta redraw, and if you fail, you draw the top card of the encounter deck. That's awful. Um, the tablet, you deal a damage or horror to the nearest innocent reveler, which just sets your progress back really badly. And then finally, the other thing is uh, quite bad for the finale. Here's the deck list I'm bringing today. It's called the Venetian Dog Sledding Champion. Leo Anderson bringing the sled dogs recently teased by FFG and the Rod of Animalism recently leaked from someone getting the box a little early. Let's you play a creature asset during your turn at a reduced cost of one and two additional ally slots, which can be used to hold creature assets. Now, uh, combining that reaction with Leo's lets you play the sled dogs from hand for one, which is why I'm packing Calling in Favors so I can return one to my hand to get one back out for free, play it the next turn for one. Also adding the rarely for me used uh, Lucid Dreaming, again, if I've got the sled dog in hand, I can search my deck for another sled dog, get it into my hand so I can keep slowly putting them into play. I've got a Leo to Luca, giving some extra actions. Star to give everyone a whole bunch of extra health and sanity, giving these guys like a collective 12 soak between them. Um, I've got my survival knife as a single weapon just in case, because I've all got all this soak, I may as well just deal damage during uh, the enemy phase. Two Bria Strads, because there's a couple of uh, really tricky enemies in this one. Faustian Bargain for some money. Scene of the Crime. Glory. Intel Report. Flashlights. Vicious Blows. Perceptions. Take the initiatives. Pretty simple stuff. Got a Drawing the Signs and a Chronophobia as my weakness, and I have a single Charisma, a single False Covenant, Counteract the Reistrads, and Faustian Bargains. So for setup, we put all of the locations except for San Marco Basilica and Canal Side into a pile, shuffle it, and randomly remove one from the game. We won't be attending the Bridge of Sighs on our visit to Venice. Next, we're going to be placing all the locations in a circle around the San Marco Basilica. So let's just shuffle that once and then drop the bottom card in each spot. And then, after that, we're going to be taking all of our masked party goers and we're going to be dropping each of them in one of the spots. So let's pull our opening hand. We're going to get Calling in Favors, Rod of Animalism, Sled Dog, Take the Initiative, Faustian Bargain. That is a pretty good opening hand. Um, I think, though, we're going to toss these two and see what we can get that's maybe a little bit, a little bit doing a little bit more for us right off the bat. Because right now, I've got plenty to get my allies going. I don't really need the money with Animalism and Sled Dog kind of coming into play naturally with the Calling in Favor. So, oh my god, yep, that's an opening hand. So here we are in play at the San Marco Basilica with the Abbess Elegia de Biaze. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Most blessed. Uh, we can use her ability to scoot us over here, and this is where we need to bring the Innocent Revelers. We've got our 8 Doom Agenda, and we've got our No Clues Act, where we need to spend a clue as a group, look at the other side of a masked carnival goer at any location, and if there are a total of three Innocent Revelers underneath the Act or Agenda, advance. And as a reminder, the masked carnival goers have a clue to flip them to their other, if their other side is an enemy and it attacks you automatically. So we're going to go ahead and start with Leo Anderson. At the start of his uh, very first term, we're going to be putting the sled dogs into play for two resources. And then, first action, we're going to spend one for calling in favors to look at the top nine cards of our deck for an ally asset and play it, reducing its cost by X. So sled dogs is going back to my hand, and I'm going to re reveal the top nine cards of the deck. There we go. So we get to put another Sled Dogs into play, right? Reducing its cost by X. And then I put the rest of these back, shuffling the deck. And then what I think I'll do is I'll drop my Rod of Animalism into play so that I can play this next Sled Dogs for the one resource I'll be getting during upkeep. And then finally, I think I'm going to... What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Abbess to move um, me to this connecting location, the Academia Bridge, which is a, oops, I forgot to set this to one one player. Let's fix that really quick. Uh, after you leave, we lose two resources and it's connected in clockwise. So we've just got a clue here to be picking up. And I think as our last action, what we'll actually do is just take a resource. We'll do our upkeep. We'll add our 
Heart Doom. And we'll proceed with our next turn at the Mythos phase here. Lost in Venice, you must either take two horror or move to a location across from you. I think for now I'm going to take two horror because I really want to get my other sled dog into play and I don't want to lose two resources when I get booted out of this location. So we'll toss one horror on the sled dog and we'll toss one horror on herself and discard that. Then at the start of our turn, we're going to use his ability and the rod of animalism to put another sled dog into play for one resource. So we've now got a two plus two attack, two damage fight available, and a double move available. So what we're going to do is we're going to get um, set up a little more to get some clues. So we'll spend one, uh, we'll take one resource, we'll spend both resources to play our flashlight, and then we'll spend one charge off the flashlight to grab a clue from our location. As a reminder, the Academia Bridge is just two shroud, and we get the clue. That's the end of the turn. So we just hit our upkeep. And we get Chronophobia, tossing a doom on the agenda, and drawing an encounter card. We get the Writhing Appendage. So I think we've got a pretty straightforward turn here. We're going to exhaust our sled dogs to attack him. Uh, six against two. And deal two damage if we hit. There we go. He's defeated. We'll play our glory from hand for two cards. And then let's think. It's going to be direct horror. And I think that we need to just get rid of that so that we're not uh, racking up a ton of horror before the end of the scenario. So we're going to be doing our upkeep. Placing a doom on the agenda and then drawing another encounter card. Chaos in the Water, test four. Each in investigator who controls an innocent reveler must also perform this. Each investigator who failed takes a damage, which must be assigned to an innocent reveler first, if able. Well, fortunately, I don't have any, and that'll be a really easy test for me to just test four against one and fail awfully. Hey, minus six. Sweet. Um, doesn't matter too much. I just take one damage, which I'll just toss on uh, one of my sled dogs here. With that Mythos phase not really doing a whole lot to us, it does mean we have a nice wide open turn. I don't want to waste money um, leaving this location if I don't have to, but at the same time I'd really like to get the Survival Knife into play. Um, and for that reason, I think what I'm going to do is play my Faustian Bargain, adding two curses, and gaining one, two, three, four, five resources. That's action one. Action two, I'm going to play my Survival Knife for two resources. And then final action, we're going to spend our clue to flip this carnival uh, mask goer over. Here we go, we got an innocent reveler. Now we do have to do the test to get them into our uh, control, but fortunately um, that does mean that we didn't just uh, eat a damage. I do have, did play the survival knife anticipating that I might have to fight someone next turn, but I thought between the two of them, sled dog and survival knife, I'd be good. Fortunately we're all good there. Another calling in favors, I might be able to get another sled dog out next turn, and let's go see what the mythos phase deals with. Get our fourth doom out of eight. What do we see down here? Acrid Miasma. Attached to the nearest location in the clockwise direction with no Acrid Miasma. That's got this nasty forced effect that's going to be crappy when I move out, but, you know, it is what it is. So like I said, first action, we're going to be playing our Calling in Favors and seeing what we get from the top of the deck after we return this sled dog. Oh, sorry, this sled dog with the damage on it. We'll, we'll put him in, into our hand instead. Um into our hand to see what we get to put into play. Looks like we're getting a Leo DeLuca out of it, but that's okay. Uh, we can put Leo over here on our Charisma, and we can uh, shuffle these nine cards back into our deck. Leo is going to cost us two resources. Oh, whoopsies. Um, but that means next turn we can play the Sled Dogs from our hand for free, so that's nice. Next action, I think I'm going to do this Parlay on the Innocent Ruffler to try and get her under con my control. I'll be testing three against two. I can put a Perception in to be... Uh, five against two, and that gets me over a pretty decent chunk of the bag. We grab a skull, which is minus two, so we do succeed, grabbing the Innocent Reveler and tossing her in play in our uh, play area, and then we also get to draw a card from our Perception. Last action, we'll do our move into the uh, Rialto Bridge, which will uh, trigger the uh, forced ability here. Uh, we test two willpower. If we fail, we either take a damage or horror or resolve the hunter keyword on each enemy in play. With no hunters in play, that's just going to be a forced damage or horror. Additionally, when we left the location, we lost two resources. So we're testing uh, four against two. Minus two, that's a success. Now we're here at the Rialto Bridge. Um, after we leave here, we have to lose an action, but this is another opportunity to see what we're doing and another opportunity to get a clue. So looking pretty good for next turn. Let's do our upkeep. Take the initiative. That'll be handy for uh, Mythos phase tests. Five out of eight doom and an encounter card. We 
get the Mass Hysteria. You must either take two damage or take each masked carnival goer, shuffle them into the encounter, uh, shuffle them so the investigators do not know which is which, and place one in each location, starting with the location clockwise from you. Masked carnival goer side face up. The nice thing about this effect is that I basically don't have to think about it. I don't know who anyone is, um, so it's very easy to just rearrange them on the board as the card describes. It's one nice thing about uh, Carnival of Horrors. There's a couple of gimmies um, early on, like this Mass Hysteria, or the one that shuffle, shoots you across the entire side of the board, that can be really handy to just kind of not have to deal with anything that turn. So at the start of my turn, I'm going to trigger Leo's ability and the Rod of Animalism to put a Sled Dog into play for one resource. I'm going to do one Investigate with our Flashlight to grab a single clue from our location. We're going to do a move, and then we're going to lose an action when we do the move, which will move us down to the Venetian Garden. The Venetian Garden has a double action to spend two resources to heal two horror. To our upkeep, another flashlight. That'll be good to replace this one in a couple minutes. We're up to six out of eight doom. Things are going pretty fast here. And we'll do our encounter card for the turn. And we're looking at chaos in the water. Each investigator who controls an innocent reveler must also perform this skill test. Each investigator who fails takes one damage, which must be assigned to an innocent reveler first if available. Well, I'm definitely going to be failing this. Uh, there's really not any sense committing to take the initiative and Mitch to this, because it's only plus two, and pl plus two's okay, but it's not worth one damage off her. So, super duper failed, and one damage goes on the Innocent Reveler. So I think over here what we're going to do is we're first going to spend our clue to flip over this masked carnival goer. Ooh, and it's Salvatore Nere. Um, and when you flip them, they immediately attack you. Um, so he's going to be attacking me for two horror. I can't believe after I put Leo DeLuca in play, I totally forgot about my uh, bonus action. But anyways, he pops into play and he deals a two damage, uh, two horror to me, excuse me. Um, now, his evade value is equal to my evade, so I'm evading one against one, and his fight is uh, four against four. It's a bit unfortunate how tough he's going to be for me to deal with, because um, with his retaliate clause and me being relatively low uh, horror uh, thresholds, it's going to be tricky to, to get him finished off. Um, I think I'm going to take an attack with the sled dogs first, so I'll be up uh, four, five, six, and I'll even put the, take the initiative in it to get uh, another plus two, so eight against his four. Uh oh, minus two, a minus four in total, so I do hit fortunately for two. Whoops, I just removed two curses for two damage. So there's my two damage on him. I think I'm actually going to take basically the same test, attacking with the survival knife. Mitch Brown, that's 8 against 4, but just for 1 damage, but fortunately, he only has 3 health. So let's see if that fires. And it does. Sweet. Alright, well, he's dealt with. Uh, he goes into the victory display. Now we've got 1 action left. I think we're just going to use a flashlight charge to be testing 3 against 1 on our location. Uh, which we succeed at. Here's our last clue, and then we're going to do our upkeep at the end of the turn. Uh, Intel report, that's nice to see. Once we start seeing some of the higher shroud locations. We're up to 7 out of 8 doom. Getting pretty dicey here. And then we'll be drawing our encounter card, which is mesmerized. If there's no masked carnival goers at your location, it gains surge. Well, just dealt with him. We get abduction. Test three. If you fail, you must either lose all of your resources or choose and discard an ally asset you control. Oh no! It's directly attacking my babies. Don't don't do that. So I'm gonna be testing four against three. We'll put an, a rod of animalism in, because that's unique anyways, it doesn't really matter too much. Hopefully two up is good enough. And it's certainly not. Um, it's a bit of a shame how much work Leo DeLuca is going to be doing for me in this scenario, because I would really love to not lose my sled dogs. But at the same time, I do have my survival knife in play for combat purposes. So, I'm sorry, buddy. I want to save some innocent revelers. So first things first this turn, we're definitely going to be using an action to move over to the flooded square which is a four shroud, one clue location with this automatically evade a non-elite enemy at the location in the counterclockwise direction. So automatically evades an enemy over there, which is kind of weird. Um, but it is a four shroud location. We did just get intel reports. So that's probably how we're going to have to get this clue if we want to get it. But rather than doing that, I'm feeling a little uh, option starved right now. And I'm going to take a turn to do a couple of card draws. So let's do one card that's glory. Double intellect icon is nice to see. We'll do another card, which is another sled dog to replace the one that we just lost. Um, and let's think if we want to draw another card or not. 
I think instead of drawing another card, I'm just going to go ahead and play my Intel report to pick up the clue at my location. So now I'm pretty good uh, in that regard for getting some more Innocent Revelers uh, determined, and I can even flip one over to see if they're going to be an enemy or not. Uh, but let's do our upkeep, and ooh, Lucid Dreaming, perfect for Sled Dog. Oh, I love to see that. We're going to be up to our 8 Doom threshold on the agenda, which is a little unfortunate that the Baleful Reveler is heading into play the nearest location with no investigators counterclockwise from the lead investigator. So he's going to be heading right down here. Now for our encounter card. We get a Lost in Venice. You must either take two horror or move to the location across from you. Well, I think we're going to be moving to the location across from us, but I'm not 100% sure. It certainly seems like this is the correct move, um, because I'll be able to turn one of my innocent revelers in, and this guy's going to be real far away from me, so I'm going to have plenty of time to get my dogs up. And then, more of an, even more than that, um, once my dogs are up, I'm going to take a single action to move like all the way to here. So I think that this is a really good gimme that this scenario just granted me. I'm going to not use my Leo Anderson reaction at the start of the turn, because I did just get this Lucid Dream, which lets me look for my other sled dog. I want to play that before I get the sled dog into play, and I can slow roll the sled dogs over the next two turns. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss my Innocent Reveler underneath the Act deck, like so. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to play my Lucid Dream, choosing the sled dogs on my hand, and searching my deck for another copy of that card and draw it. Here's my sled dog, um, and I think I'm going to do something a little aggressive, but I'd rather it pay off than it fail. Sorry. I'd rather try, I'd rather risk this paying off than, 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 than wasting clues flipping people over. I'm going to spend a clue to flip over the, the guy at my location. So there's a big risk here, but it could be worth it. Oh, and it is. Sweet. So we are going to have to get her somehow. I, I don't really want to use my glory and my flashlight um, as commits, but this is not great odds either. Um, I could stand here trying it for a while, but the problem is, if I start drawing these, then I could just kill them. Obviously, the odds of it dying before I get to draw something is a bit low, but I, I'd rather not that happen. So I'm going to have to take a big think on how I want to get her into my play area. I think, actually, I am going to just end up testing it. I'm three against two. Oh my god. That is beautiful. Search the top three cards of your deck for an ally asset. Draw it. I'm probably not going to have anything else. I already have all my uh, allies um, used up. But I do get to add the Innocent Reveler into my play area. So I can turn her in next turn, and we just need to find one more. Now we're doing our upkeep. That's very nice. Vicious Blow will be very useful. The Baleful Reveler is going to hunt once, and then after he moves from the Hunter keyword, I reveal a random token from the Chaos Bag. If I reveal any of the uh, bullshit tokens, resolve his Hunter keyword once again. And we do. So he's motoring along to find us. I'm going to add one Doom to the agenda up here, and then we're going to draw an encounter card, which is Mass Hysteria. It must either take two damage, or take each masked Carnival Goer, Shuffle them so the investigators do not know which is which, and place one in each location, starting with the location clockwise from you. Um, again, this is a huge gimme. I just, <laughs> I just rearranged the map for this to be perfectly, or I just, I just moved across the map for this to be perfectly advantageous. This is what I love about this scenario: is that these are going to either absolutely dumpster you, or just help you immensely. So I pick up all the vast carnival goers. Shuffle them a couple times. Where's my shuffle button? Why is this not working? There we go. And then I drop them. One, two, three, four. And I'm all set up to come get these guys. Of course, I need some extra clues to do that, but, you know, they're there. Now, at the start of my turn, I am going to use Leo Anderson to pay one resource and the Rod of Animalism to put a sled dog into play. And then for my first action, I'm going to spend one action to turn the Innocent Reveler into the Axe deck. Like so. Just need one more Innocent Reveler to be able to advance. I'm going to use the uh, Abbas Allegria di Biaze to scoot us over. And now it has dawned on me that I actually was being a little hasty uh, in doing that last treachery, because I do only have the one clue, and I'm going to have to loop the whole way around the map and pick up some clues on the way to be able to figure out who's who <laughs> and whether they're safe. But it is kind of cool that I can do this. Um, I'm going to wait one more turn before trying this guy so that I can hit them with a heavier sled dog attack with a vicious blow in case it is an enemy. And so for this turn, I'm just going to take a resource, draw a card, looking pretty good, and you know what? I might 
take another resource because at the start of my next turn I want to have one and then I want to be able to play my flashlight over my flashlight. The hunter is going to move here and then we're going to pull a token to see if he moves again. He does not move again. We'll do our upkeep. Two vicious blows is really nice alongside my sled dogs that are going to be in play. Getting up to two out of three doom on the shadow of the eclipse. And we'll draw our encounter card for the turn. Another acrid miasma attached to the nearest location in the clockwise direction with no acrid miasma. So now I've got two locations in a row. Pretty bad. This is going to make him catch up with me real quick. At the start of my turn, I spend one resource and use my rod of animalism to put my last sled dog into play. I can now attack for three damage with a plus three for fight or do three moves in a single action. I'm going to use my first action to spend two to replay a flashlight over my other flashlight. Might seem kind of stupid, but I'm actually going to use my, uh, whoops, I'm going to use my uh, triple move. So first we're going to do one move here, which is going to trigger this uh, test, four against two, that we pass. Then we'll do our second move right here, which will trigger this test, four against two, which we will pass. And then we'll move one more time to head here, which will be the end of my sled dog expedition. After that we're going to move one more time over to the streets of Venice. Say two going on here. Two uh, shroud, two clue location. We've got our move thing on it and we can get a couple of clues here so we can eventually loop back around and we're going to do just that, picking up a clue with our flashlight. Perfect. During the enemy phase this guy's going to move and we're going to pull a token to see if he hunts again, which I actually would like him to. Uh, okay, that actually does nothing, that's kind of funny. Um, and then we will do an upkeep. Yep, star is going to be really nice uh, for my sled dogs. Just occurred to me that I actually was supposed to lose an action after moving there, and so I think I shouldn't have been able to do that investigate. I'll just take that off my next turn. We're at 3 out of 3 doom, which is going to result in an advance. If there are one or more carnival mast, uh, sorry, if there are one or more masked carnival goers in play, the lead investigator chooses one and flips it to his other side. If its other side is an innocent reveler, place it underneath the agenda deck. So now I've got a choice of which of these I'm going to flip, and the question is, do I flip the sooner one and have to fight through an enemy? to deal with it, or do I flip a later one to have to fight through an enemy after I've found the Innocent Reveler that I want to bring back to the Basilica? Now, I'm not expecting to bring it back to the Basilica. It's probably more likely at this point that I'm going to flip um, the Innocent Reveler and it'll get put under the agenda, but I do think that it's kind of worth considering where, where the guy I want to flip is now in case it's an enemy. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the guy right here. It might seem kind of weird, um, but I'd like to move through. The problem is that I have to I have to get to the Basilica, and then I have to get back to the canal site again. So I have to make two more full loops around the map, which is fine. I do have the sled dogs. But I think that this guy kind of puts me in a good spot where the guy behind me doesn't have any risk of being a hunter, and the guy right here doesn't have any risk of, like, stopping my progress getting through to the rest of them. So we get Savio Corvi, who is a hunter. This is the exact one I was kind of worried about. And of course, he's the guy that can walk across the entire uh, length of the map this way if you're too far ahead of him. So you can only ever be about three spots ahead of him before he suddenly catches up. Now, there's still a masked carnival goer in place. We flip this back to 2A, and then we pull our encounter card, which is going to be the Watcher's Gaze Test 4. Each investigator who controls an Innocent Reveler must also perform this test. If you fail, take a Horror, which must be assigned to the Innocent Reveler. Well, we don't have any, so we're testing 4 against 4. No icons. Plus 1. Nice, not so bad. So like I said a minute ago, I moved that uh, flashlight uh, test to this turn just to try and, you know, play by the rules correctly. What we're going to do, I think, because we've got three uh, innocent, uh, or sorry, we've got one innocent left amongst three, what we're going to do is we're going to try and get a couple more clues. So we'll be testing uh, three against zero again, which grabs us the clue from this location. And then we're going to use the free triggered ability on this to move one location in the clockwise direction. So we head up to the canal side. Uh, after you enter the canal side, we place a clue on it from the clue bank. We're going to do another flashlight test to grab another clue. There's our last clue from the location. And now what we've got is we've got four clues that we can use to peek at each of the masked carnival goers that are left and then flip the correct one that we actually want to see. So last action, I'm just going to take a resource so that we can get Star on a play to have a big bank of health to deal with using our survival knife to its fullest. We're doing some hunter moves. We'll move uh, Savio first to there, and then we'll move the Baleful Reveler there and pull a token to see if he moves again. He does not move again. We'll do our upkeep. 
Ooh, drawing the signs. Well, we'll be getting rid of that next turn as well. We get a Doom on the agenda, and we get an encounter card. Looks like it's Pole Man. Spawn at Canal Side. Well, he's right on top of me. So we definitely want to be killing the Pole Man this turn. Um, he's a bit tricky for me to deal with. The Sled Dogs can attack for three, and I can commit a Vicious Blow to it, but that's only putting me at uh, eight against four, and I guess that's good enough to give it a go. Yeah, so let's try that. I'll pull to zero, so he gets defeated for four damage. That's pretty nice. It would have been nice to keep that Vicious Blow for someone that maybe was a little more deserving of it than just the baby little pole man, but it is what it is. We'll do two actions to get rid of his drawing the signs. And then last, I think we're just going to head up to the Guardian to try and keep uh, keep ahead of Savio and keep behind the Baleful Reveler. After we enter the location, we draw a card. And we get an intel report, which is not hugely useful, but it is what it is. So we'll do our hunters. Savio moves there. The Baleful Reveler moves forward one. Can we please pull some tokens so that he moves faster? Let's see! Yes, he does. Thank goodness. We want to be able to get to these guys soon. Uh, we'll click our upkeep. Bought in blood. Oh no, I think that defeats one of our, uh, one of our doggos. Yeah. Bye-bye, the doggo. Yeah, that's okay. Not a big deal. That's actually, uh, just about as, as painless as it could have been. But I am back to only two damage available in play, which is pretty risky. Head back up here for an extra doom. Two out of three. Let's see what we get. We get the Chaos in the Water, which is a test of four. Again, we're just going to fail that. Uh, minus two, so we take one damage, which we'll just throw on one of our sled dogs again. Forgot to play Glory when I killed that guy, but I guess that would have just killed one of my dogs a bit sooner. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, scoot over once, and then use the Abyss immediately to move over to the Innocent Reveler next to her, like so. We're going to toss a star into play, whoops, one too many, so that all of my guys have a bit more of a health pool associated with them. Uh, we're going to spend one clue to look at the side of the Innocent Reveler on us, uh, as described on the uh, Act card. So we're just going to look at this one. There's the Innocent Reveler that we need. Finally, we'll spend a clue to flip it over and get the Innocent Reveler available at our location to parlay shortly. We have the uh, Baleful Reveler to do a move, uh, hunting, and then we'll pull a token to see if he hunts again. He does not. And then, unfortunately, I forgot about uh, Sevio over here, so he's going to be hunting to us, engaging us, dealing us a damage and a horror, but just before that, I'm going to get to make an attack with my survival knife. So I'll be attacking uh, six against three. That's a minus three, but I don't fail, so I get to deal two damage to him. We'll get to do our upkeep over here. Ooh, Raystrad, that'll be nice. We can finish him off pretty easily with that. An extra Doom up here, which is going to flip another Masked Carnival Goer in play. We'll flip this guy over here. That is Don Legorio. While resolving the Hunter keyword on Don Legorio's location is connected to the location in the counterclockwise direction as well as the clockwise direction. So he's going to be coming back towards us. And then we'll take a look at an encounter card. We get a Writhing Appendage. Uh-oh, starting to get buried here. So we've got a lot of actions. I think we're just going to try out uh, a 6 against 2 on the Writhing Appendage first, which is successful. He's toast, and I will play my Glory for two cards. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to play a Riastrad to be attacking 4. We're going to go 5, 6, 7 against 3 on Savio. Minus 1. That's a hit, and that defeats him as well. Up to the victory display. Let's try and get the Innocent Reveler on us with a Perception. We're testing five against two. Ooh, successful. Well, I've only got one card left in the deck, and I know what it is. This is my scene of the crime. It's the only one I haven't drawn. Uh, but we do get to draw it because of the Perception, and we do get to add the Innocent Reveler to our play area, like so. Um, and last but not least, let's take a look at the situation here. I think what we're going to do is we're going to move down once, to the Rialto Bridge, losing two resources, but we're going to be um, uh, forcing this acrid miasma to get him to move quicker to me and get him to move quicker away from me. So boom, uh, I'm testing four against two here. I do fail it, and so he hunts once and pulls a token to see if he hunts again. He does not, and then he hunts once that way. That's the end of my turn, and so we're into the enemy phase. He's going to hunt once and then pull a token to see if he hunts again, which he does. 
and then Don Ligorio is going to hunt once on to me and deal me two damage, which I'm going to go one, two. Uh, and again, before he actually deals the damage, my survival knife is going to proc. I'm going to go six against four. Um, I think that's good enough for now. Minus four. Well, it does miss, but he doesn't have retaliate, so not that big of a deal. Do our upkeep. Shuffling the deck. Put drawing a... Uh... Ooh, a sled dog. Perfect. That's excellent. Playing the sled dog for free and then a vicious blow. Pretty nice uh, for next turn. One doom to the agenda up here keep forgetting to ready the abbess, but it's not hugely relevant. And then an encounter card, which is the Carnival Sentinel. He spawns across from you. At Canal Side, which is not a great spot for him to be, but it's as good a spot as any, I suppose. So like I said at the start of the turn, we're going to be playing our sled dog for uh, one resource total. And then I've got two options for dealing with Don Ligorio. I can either dump a big Reistrat attack into him, or I can do a Vicious Blow sled dog attack into him. And I think what I like a little bit more is the Vicious Blow attack. Reason being, I can Lucid Dream my other Reistrad, and I think that's worth a lot more to me um, later, when I get a couple more enemies that are worth killing in one hit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Sled Dogs for Vicious Blow, testing four up. That's as high as we can get over that bag there we get a minus two. So he is toast up into the victory display. Perfect. So now we're in a bit of a pickle where we have to like get all the way back to the abbess somehow. So this guy's got to get out of the way. We've got to kill the Carnival Sentinel. And we've got to move. But I guess we do have these uh, this next miasma to keep him moving. So we'll do... Uh, I know that this is an enemy, so I'm not even worried about him. So we'll move here, losing an action, and triggering this test. Losing an action, spending an action, triggering the test... I fail, and so he hunts, and uh, whoops, so he's going to hunt up here, and then I'm going to pull another token to see if he hunts again, he does not hunt. Last action, I'm just going to take a resource, because like I said, I'd love to play this Lucid Dreaming to get fetch this other Reistrad from my deck. Finally, the Baleful Reveler hunts over to the San Marco Basilica, and we pull a token to see if he hunts, he does not. We'll do our upkeep over here, we get an intel report. Not very useful. And we will flip our Doom up once and check out what encounter card we get. A Mass Hysteria. You must either take two damage or take each Masked Carnival Goer, shuffle them so the investigators do not know which is which, and place one in each location, starting with the location clockwise from you. Well, once again, I don't really need to take damage for this. I can just move this guy right here, and it's pretty easy to deal with. So we'll just do that. What I'm going to do on this turn is I'm going to flip an action to play Elusive Dreaming. I'm going to search my deck for a copy of Reistrad. There he is. I'm going to use my Sled Dogs as a triple move to go one, two, three, engaging the Carnival Sentinel. Then I'm going to use a Reistrad from hand. We're going to be getting uh, two Chaos tokens added to this. One, two which we're going to be swinging at him, uh, excuse me, this is six against three. That's pretty good. We're going to commit one icon to it to get past those minus fours. feel pretty comfortable with that. And he is toast. Finally, we'll do one more move action up to the garden, sorry, the guardian, and draw a card. And we get a calling in favors. So then the Baleful Reveler is going to do his hunt take a look at whether he hunts again. He does. He shoves down the Rialto Bridge. And then we do upkeep. So we've got to take the initiative. We've got a calling in favors. We can probably get our fourth uh, sled dog in play if we're lucky on this uh, hit. And if not, I can play it again for one the turn afterwards. Doing our last advance. One, two, three. Ba-boom. If there are one or more masked carnival goers in play, we choose and flip it to the other side. So this guy over here is going to flip that is Elisabetta Magro. Uh, when you look at her, you flip her. When the Mythos phase ends, you place a Doom on her. So I'm going to have to get my way over to her, or else I'm going to get absolutely demolished. Now, there are no Masked Car Carnival goers in place. We have to flip this uh, to Agenda 3A now. Um, in the lagoon, an ancient terror stirs. The creature's tentacles coil around the city, and the water level begins to rise. Cool. After a writhing appendage enters play, place two Doom on it. 
be getting our encounter card, which is the Watcher's Gaze. Uh, we're testing four against four. We don't really have... We, we could put a Take the Initiative into this, and I think we will. Yeah, we'll put a Take the Initiative. Um, actually, there's no point, because it's just it's just one horror. Uh, minus four. He's not in play, and he doesn't attack us, but we do have to put a horror on our Instant Reveler. And then at the end of the Mythos phase, Elisabetta Magro gets a Doom. Uh-oh. So, first things first, we're going to play Calling in Favors to return one of our Sled Dogs to our hand. Look at the top nine cards for a Sled Dog. Put it into play. There he is. But we'll see if, um, I guess we do have Mitch as an option, but I'll put the Sled Dog into play instead. For free. We're going to move once over to the Abbess, and then we're going to use an action to put the Incident Reveler underneath the Act deck, up here. And now that means we've fulfilled our objective on the Carnival Conspiracy. Put the set aside, send it, send it act, I don't know how to pronounce that, into play in the center of all locations. For the remainder of the scenario, he's considered to be in play, but not at any location. Uh, and we flip another Masked Carnival Goer and flip it to his other side, Well, there aren't any, so he heads into the center of the table. Um, we could try to defeat him if we want to, or we could try to escape. So we can try to escape by uh, getting out uh, to this canal side, but that's really far away. Now he does only have eight health, and that means I only need to um, succeed on two attacks with my sled dogs. So that means in the next two turns, I could use my sled dogs to attack him four each time, or I could even try a Rhea Strad for four and then a sled dogs for four next turn. That being said, um, I think I need to get some more icons to make sure that those hit, or I need to, well, first I need to get the other sled dog into play. So we're going to uh, draw one card for a vicious blow. That's really good. And then we're going to uh, draw another card. Ooh, Bot and Blood. Not good. Must discard an ally asset I control from play. Well, I think because of what my plan right now is, I'm actually just going to lose the Leo de Luca. As much as that's a bit of a bummer, um, once I get all of my sled dogs in play, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident I can kill him next turn. So we're going to see the Baleful Reveler uh, do a hunt. He's going to hunt there once. He's going to pull a token to see if he hunts again. He does not. And then we'll do upkeep, which will put another Chronophobia into play in front of us. That's no good. But I guess we, we have time for this. We have time for this. We're up to two Doom because of uh, the girl down below, plus this one. And then we'll pull an encounter card. And we will get a Writhing Appendage, which gets two Doom on it. Yuck. Well, fortunately, we can try and get rid of that with the Survival Knife, but we're already at four out of uh, three Doom, so it's not actually that big of a deal. Uh, sorry, actually, we're at five, because Elisabetta gets another one at the end of the Mythos phase. So it's not a big deal. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use the Route of Animalism to get our last Sled Dog into play. And now I guess I'm just weighing my options on am I doing the big attack right now to try and kill him? He only has 8 health. Or am I going to try and spread it out a little bit because I do have a bit of time. Um, he is going to start hitting me, but I've got boatloads of health with these uh, Sled Dogs with the Star. Just an insane amount. And I've barely taken any damage directly on Leo. So I think we're going to start off with the big sled dog attack into Snidathqua. We'll go with that. Um, so I'm testing eight against four. I've got quite a few curses in the bag, so I'm probably going to put this Take the Initiative into it. That's going to put us up 11 against four. We draw a minus two. Okay, so we do hit him for four. That's really good. There's our four damage on him. So I think at this point I'm committed to it. I'm going to play the Reastrad, adding one, two, three curse tokens, commit a vicious blow alongside it. That's testing nine against four. We'll see what we get. Curse token, which I'll cancel. Uh, how does that work exactly? Return to the token pool, reveal another token. Well, I guess I'll just do that. Move one and then pull another token. Another curse token and a minus three. So that's minus five. I was nine against four. That's a hit for five damage. Here's this on Sidnathqua, Sid and he is defeated. We will head to R2. The creature recoils as globules of its jelly-like flesh rip and tear from its body, splashing into the lagoon. It makes no sound as its torn body shrinks, sinks into the depths. 
The chanting in the city plunges into mournful silence. As you return to the canal side streets, black feathers fall from the sky where bright confetti once fluttered. You can only wonder how long it will take for the creature to recover. In your campaign log, record that Snidathqua retreated to nurse its wounds. Um, and we don't really care too much about the uh, victory and the additional reward stuff, but you'd get a mask, and I would have gotten um, the abbess satisfied, and I would have been able to add her to my deck. So, uh, grazie mille. Thank you for all your help. You're welcome. Um, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully this one was entertaining. Once again, if you like the way that these are being edited, um, drop a note. If you see any errors, let me know. It's kind of a mixed bag of a flurry of... Uh, <laughs> A flurry of editing and rapid takes on my end, so I noticed in my last one I missed a couple of cuts that I had footage for and I just didn't splice them in correctly. So um, if you're if you're liking what you see here, let me know, um, and I'll try to figure out a way to get these get my longer play videos a bit more pared down, like these ones will be. Thanks very much, appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.